Hello and welcome back to another fun night with Dorsa. <laughs> I am uh, forgetting which number this is, but I know we're continuing. Number five, thank you. We <laughs> are on part five of uh, French. Uh, we've had a bunch of segues, we've done a bunch of filler doors. I know that people seem to really enjoy it when I talk to my personal games and how I prepared it, why I did what I did, and how I learned that opening. So I'm continuing those. And I feel like it's a little bit too honest because if I'm playing another serious tournament anytime soon, that'll be <laughs> a, little, a little, little problematic. Um, but hey, <laughs> well, anything for my students and my viewers. So, um, yeah, we, uh, to kind of circle back, I, the, the, the way that I kind of learned how to play really good in French and uh, kind of Karakan and a little bit of Philidor was because I read that the specific book that Parimar John Negi wrote, oh my god, 2014, 15. It's been a little while. But it's still relevant, <laughs> the, the opening still holds, as you can see. Um, so it's something that if you want to just gain a better understanding of this middle games, how to avoid the super specific main lines and how to just make sure your opponent is annoyed, I do recommend uh, Negi's books. The first one was about um, French Karakan Philidor. Uh, the, the other three were Sicilian and the last one was Miners, minor defenses. I have not actually read the last one yet. Anywho, I want to go ahead and jump in because it's been a very long week already. <laughs> uh, so, the one that I'm going to show you is with, like the last time we talked a little more in depth about Bishop G5, and Bishop G5 was something that I play very frequently on and off, but I also uh, hold a special place in my heart for E5. So, I'm going to take a second and just kind of get a little bit of vote who plays this he, who has encountered this position in like let's say last two years as white or black okay i see oh my god i see so many hands <laughs> i did not expect that <laughs> cool uh, well i guess if you're in a french class you probably have encountered french positions before <laughs> all right okay great i see a bunch of people in the chat are also uh, agreeing that they have encountered this which is wonderful so uh, the thing to keep in mind is that, again, you are not obligated to, to always play bishop g5 or always play e5. But the, with bishop g5, I, I, I got burned a little, to be honest. There was a specific game that just really, really burned me bad. Um, it was, I'll just give you this before we close the bishop g5 chapter. I, ha I was like 2015 World Youth Championship. And I was playing on board one, and if I win, I have a really clear shot at getting first. If I don't, then my opponent has like, well, she was playing really good. Uh, it was Mahalakshmi. Um, she was playing really good. She was about, about to win the tournament, but if she won, she was like definitely gonna win the tournament. If I won, then I was probably gonna win the tournament. So it was like one of those tournaments, one of those games. So I had this all prepared, and I went to the game, and I felt so good about it. And for some reason, I just, my position started to really collapse, like really bad, like terribly. And I thought, you know, I mean, opponent is doing stuff, undoing stuff, and that is not the case. She just was really, really bad. And I lost before 30th move, and oof. Needless to say, it was a very fun game after that. I still, I mean, I, I think I think there were still a few rounds left, and I played them, and there there was still a very fun tournament. <laughs> uh, so many memories are passing by. <laughs> ah man, World Youth, World Junior, always was so much fun. But I'm just showing you a very general reason on why I don't. Um, who won the tournament? In my category, which was girls under 18, 2015, Mahalakshmi um, did win it. It was like she was one of those. But like we were both, she was playing for India, I was playing for Iran, so we always played in like Asian dudes and then world dudes, and then every year we just played and played and played. And oh my god, I was running out of openings to play against her, but she won this one. And anyways, um, I'm just showing you why uh, why I am not the biggest fan of it. Just this bishop before really burned me. 
one too many times, so I'm still a little sore. Sour? Sore? All right. So I, uh, I started to get more into e5. Now, knight's got to go. Now what do we do? Probably you already know the opening. If you don't know, it's on the study as well. <laughs> but what do you think is a good idea for white right now? Yep. What is a good idea for black? What is a very typical thing in this pawn structure? <coughs> C5. Yep. And we also want to try and develop. We don't want to take that before we have to. <coughs> and now, um, I've seen people play this multiple different ways, but <coughs> I am very comfortable with bishop e3. So black has a few ideas. I'm going to show you the 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 craziest one first <laughs> with queen b6. All right. What do you think this queen wants here? Why did my opponent <laughs> just make this move? B2 yeah. And some eyes on this, right? So we have to be careful because if if we are setting up to do long castle, well that's going to be a problem for us. So what is a good idea for white? If you know the opening, great. If you don't know it, try to reason through it. That is true, you're completely correct. Let's say they give the check. That is also very correct. <coughs> because, I mean, your knife's under attack, so either you have to bring the knife back or c3 it, so c3 makes more sense. Now, let's say they take. You can't take back with a pawn. You could take with a knight or bishop, or you could b for it. Which one? Well, knight is okay, but how about pawn to b4? Because that, if that works, that will be great intermezzo. You already get to kick the queen away. There is uh, quite a lot of theory in b4. Um, I'll actually show you a little bit of it. You're not obligated to play b4 if you don't want to. You can take it, but if you do take it, then knight takes, let's say you take back and pawn b5. And then you have to kind of think knight c5, and then, then take, and then b4, and it can get a little too comfortable for opponent, and I don't like to give my opponent that many chances. So let's say with b4. Now let's say they take it, we take back, bishop takes b4 is the best one. What's a good idea for whites right now? We gotta stop the check, this guy's falling, so should be an easy peasy bishop d2 find. They take, we gotta take back with the knight, so up until here it's pretty forced. Now, opponent has uh, b5, which is the best, and somebody played castle against me. Let's look at castle first to see why it's a little bit worse. So, why do you think that is? What does castle give us that b5 earlier wouldn't? I agree. Thank you, chat. Let's see. What about in person? Queen b3. Queen b3. Um, I'm not opposed to queen b3, but I feel like if you do queen b3, I mean, I kind of want to go b5 anyways. 
so this stops it, that's fair. If I get this, that's great, I agree. But what if if you go queen b3, they, hmm, so you're stopping this. But you're also kind of not get setting up for castle, so what if I try to open up my rook? Because if take, then knight could take, and knight wants to jump here. And you're not fast enough to castle. Even if you get bishop d3, I'll still go knight d4. You take, I take, you can't stop this. So because opponent has this much uh, power in the center, you have to be fast. Bishop d3 is kind of a must. And after bishop d3, let's say they go b5, you retract the knight. In the game that I had, my opponent went knight b6. And I kind of simply got to castle. And I got myself into this situation, which is totally good. And this was a really comfortable game for me. If only if I can remember when slash where I played it. <laughs> um, I know there was one a game here. There was another game that had a little bit of a uh, move order difference. I'll get into that as well. But this would be really comfortable. You move it away. Now I'm bringing my attack here. If g6, well, great. If f6, then I can also take. If you take with the rook, I'm still going to knight g5 it. And I have a bunch of threats here. So I'm very comfortable with this as well. So let me go back. I'm going to do a big jump. Let's say here, what if they play b5? First, what now? Kind of have to go knight b2, right? Now, let's say a uh, knight goes to b6 to still want to do those knight c4 ideas. So the difference here is that comparing this line with the short castle and having the bishop on d3 line is that a black could be like saving a move by not castling. So how does that help? Uh, Mohammed is asking, can I, uh, can I ask how many hours you train per day? Oh man, right now I'm just teaching. If teaching counts as training, <laughs> that's going to be a lot of hours. I'm not preparing for a specific tournament, so I'm not training the, um, as a professional chess player would. So it's kind of different. When I am preparing for a specific tournament, then I would be doing... Oh my god, opening prep, getting sharper, the evaluation, understanding what the position needs. Oh my god, end games, end games. So it really depends on why am I preparing, what is the purpose of the training. So white to move, what do we do here? You know what your opponent wants to do. Huge imbalance. <laughs> Let me just put my foot here and make sure that's good. So, what do we think? I'm getting a bunch of knight b3s. Man, I wish I could play knight b3. Mm -hmm. Or queen b3s in the chat. The problem with queen b3 is still knight c4. Surprisingly, the best one is a4 because you want to combat this knight c4 and if knight c4 happens, now you get to take, attack the queen. Now if the queen takes it, well awesome, now I'm attacking uh, this knight with 3, they're only defending with 2, I'm very happy about this. Let's see, what else is there? Um, 
there is a kind of an interesting king f2 as well that I kind of tried once in a blitz game. I just didn't really understand why I was doing it though. <laughs> so I'm not really recommending that, but I do recommend a4. Um, now in the real game when my opponent played this, so this was a, how do I put it? Uh, opponent should have uh, played castle first to make sure that we develop to kind of kind of put the king in safety, then go b5, and then we don't really have a pawn a4 as fast. I mean, white is still better. That's kind of why the 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 peace sacrifice for black doesn't work. But this would be the the better situation for black. But in a different game, my opponent decided to kind of mix up the move order a little bit. But now I sh could have had a4, but I kind of didn't. And then I went queen f3, and I put the queen on d3, and it made things really awkward. I, s I knew I kind of had advantage, but it was just so hard to get the pieces moving. I ended up winning the game, um, but I'm still going to like jump, do a huge jump here, because there's not much theory in this specific situation that I want to talk about. Big jump. Big jump coming up. So that's kind of the, the big thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to queen b6. Now let's talk about difference line. Let's talk about a6. How do we feel about a6? I've only had a very few games in this. I mean, there's a theory in it, but game-wise, I've had less. Wait, 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 wait. I'm seeing something in the chat that I feel like I should respond to. <laughs> okay, that was funny. So um, there's a discussion about how to become an IM and uh, the, the answer seems to be to become an IM you must beat IMs and they're very good at chess and rarely lose <laughs> and um, so the trick the becomes figuring out how some unwinnable positions can be won I mean this buddy James is not really wrong per se <laughs> but man you should have seen the dirty flags people did, did me when I was playing like what two hours ago there's a lot of dirty flagging that's not the case it's not that we it's not that the title players rarely lose we're just more experienced and more tricky and kind of know which buttons to push or not to push <laughs> but um, the the main thing is no that's not how getting norms and titles work exactly you do need to, you need to, it, is, it has to be a FIDE uh, tournament, so it's FIDE rated event, you can't play a USCF event and gain FIDE titles, you need to play a FIDE rated tournament, you need to be playing a certain number of titled opponents, even IMs, GMs, WGMs, WM, they count depending on what title you're trying to get, you need to gain a certain uh, performance rating, so it's not your rating that needs to cross a certain level, but also that you're, you need to have a specific performance rating in that specific tournament that you're getting a, a title uh, norm from, and you need to you need to have at least three norms. So like you need to have three different tournaments that you have had that great performance, which you would obtain by beating the title players. But we have a. Um, Viewer saying swallowing an engine sounds like an easier way to beat IMs and GMs. I don't know, that's just not comfortable. <laughs> and digestions and how would I understand what the engine is saying? I would turn into a weird Nah, that's too complicated. Just train chess. <laughs> Alright, back to it now. What do you want to do here? A6. What's a good idea for us? Let me start by which side do you think you're gonna castle? Most likely, yes. So, but I mean, if you just go ahead and play bishop d3, then queen b6 would be more problematic. So, you need to start preparing for this queen b6 as well. Because since opponent's pawn is up here, there's tension between these two pawns, right? So, because of the pawn structure, the way it seems to be is that the, you are gonna wanna like do f5 and stuff, and opponent is gonna wanna do stuff in your queen side. 
So as long as you can neutralize the attack that opponents will do in the queen side, and at the same time keep your attack in the king side, you should have an easy understanding of what's going on. Now, some of the things that black can do to kind of mess with your hopes and dreams in king side is f6 or f5. So keep that in mind as well. But right now, a3 is possible, queen d2 is possible. I was uh, quite a big fan of queen d2. And after queen d2, let's say opponent goes ahead and plays pawn to b5. Now, yes, we don't really want a long castle anymore. I agree with that. What do you think is a good idea? There are few ideas that are good, but what seems right to you? I like a3, I think a3 is totally fine. Then you're gonna probably get this bishop out and start um, heading for castle. Yeah, that's completely fine. Uh, in this specific game, um, I wanted to take, because <laughs> I was actually just learning about this specific pawn structure, so I wanted to give it a try. There's nothing wrong with take, but let me just keep this position in mind. Uh, let me just do a mini jump back. If bishop goes to e7, then when we take and if the bishop takes it kind of feels a little bit more prepared for especially because opponent kind of wasted a move and then took it so i was getting deeper in understanding these specific pawn structures but then when my opponents played a6 i was like man i've been uh, sorry a6 then i was like oh man i've been preparing for you know the specific structures i want to try it eh let's just take it <laughs> That is not the very good decision to make, but it was a fine move, so I don't have anything against it. And I kind of wanted to see if my opponents would do this super, super cool potential um, blunder. What do you think is a good move for white right now? I'm sorry? Knight Why knight to e4? The weirdest thing in the DLC was e4. <laughs> it's possible. Um, yeah, because of these the d6, basically, you're attacking the bishop and you're attacking d6, and there's just a lot of tricks. Well, one yeah. A lot of people would say bishop e4. And bishop e4 is actually not good because knight, e6, knight b6. And I mean, even if you take, they take back, and you're just losing too much and gaining too little. So d4, knight takes, knight takes, knight e4 is the best one. The idea is, well, first of all, if you move the bishop, well, then hallelujah. If you move it, now I guess bishop e4. You don't have knight b6 anymore. If you don't move it, if you like go queen b6, then I can take. Uh, if you take with the knight, well, this guy drops, so let's say queen takes, now boom, c3. Um, let's say, let's say, let's just castle, then I could try and take it, and then after take, I could just, you know, take over here, because if you take, I have this discovery attack. Well, why am I arrowing? Well, I can just do this. But I would also prefer to, to make it a little bit more uncomfortable on you. So if you were to go short castle, why not just c3? This is already pinned, right? There's two attackers, one defenders. I'm enjoying this. Yeah? Goody, goody. All right. Um, so I, was, I think a part of me was kind of um, hoping my opponents would play this d4 and blunder. But the kid didn't. The kid knew what he was doing. <laughs> and then I had to enter this end game, which I do think is definitely worth looking into because of how the, the, the pawns are. So let's take a second and talk. Let's just see what do you think is going on here? What's something that white wants? What's something that black wants? So what is going on here? Anything specific? I 
Yeah, so white's gonna wanna do stuff in the d4 square. So what do you think is a good idea for black? Um, there seems to be a bunch of fight going to happen about this square. Okay, let me let me rephrase my question. What do you think is black's biggest problem? The yeah, this bishop is the same color as these pawns, right? So black's that's kind of the biggest problem that black is facing. So black would like to be able to resolve that. And that could happen if black can get d4 and this bishop is here, right? So your main priority should be to move this knight, put c3, and put a knight here. So that's kind of what I tried to do. My opponent is kind of stopping my c3, so I had to play it a little more creative. And it got a little weird. <laughs> but I had advantage, and it was just a matter of how to convert, and it took another 20, 30 moves to convert it to a full win, but the, uh, the end game is now comfortable. So my point is that when you're learning openings, it's not just about memorization, it's also about understanding the pawn structure and the, like, okay, let's say that you put the queens off, then what are you doing? Let's say you keep the queens, then what are you doing? So it's about the center, the weaknesses, the structure, the king safety, it's about the whole thing. It's not just about memorizing openings, which it's sometimes really hard for people to understand when they're just looking at openings. They'll literally just go, engine did that, engine, 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 engine. Or like master games played this. I have so many kids who, uh, who like ask me about a specific opening just because they heard it's cool, like somebody played it on a stream and I'm like, Ugh. like you, this is a whole different thing that you do not play. You're never gonna play because it's not your style and you're just asking me about it because you think it has a cool name. So many kids love the dragon opening, and I'm like, <laughs> just like, just because it's dragon. And I'm like, well, how about the other dragon opening? <laughs> no, I, I can't really do that, because they can actually watch streamers, and they, there's only one dragon opening. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, ooh. oh, my heart. Yeah, um, we have to be very careful with their opening choices. All right, I'm going to do a big jump back. Yeah, so let's talk about bishop e7 now. What do we think? I like that, why? <gasps> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you're not wrong. Um, I feel like if my opponent kind of closes up the center, I wouldn't mind casting this way. But as long as like it's the tension is here, I don't. I don't know if I want to do it. Wait, wait. What am I talking about? No, 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 no. If opponent closes up, I don't want to castle. But as long as the tension is here, I'm still kind of undecided. I want to have the option. So yes, queen d2 is good. You also might want to go queen f2 to kind of start bugging this pawn. Uh, let's say castle. Now what? How are we feeling? There are 
are okay i'm getting a lot of bishop b5 questions bishop b5 is not the place to be for your bishop first of all even if you come here and you take this they take back and they get bishop a6 which i don't think we do i don't want and yeah if i can have this diagonal that would be ideal for me right now it's not really i can't really do that because they can push but this is this is a good bishop i don't want to just take it take them that nice with it all right what else we got it's very possible, but remember, we, uh, I kind of mentioned that after bishop e7, we might want to take, and if they take back, they've lost the tempo. So uh, why not that? Why not that before instead of queen b2? Um, I kind of wanted to, for the castle to happen first. I mean, we could take it, but then they take, and I, I'm not trying to take it, I'm trying to queen d2 it. So... I guess it could just transpose, but this kind of makes it a little bit more um, tricky. Just a little bit. What if queen f2 instead of taking? Uh, it is possible, but what if <coughs> f6? Because the rook is in front of the queen, that's kind of giving me some questionable thoughts. So let's say take, let's say first things first, um, bishop takes back. Now what? Can we long castle now? Yeah. I agree. Let's say queen a5, now what? They're trying to create an attack, but because the center is uh, less locked now we don't have to um be that worried king b1 king b1 is fine but can i just take this and then then take back then i can just develop i don't think king b1 is bad but it feels like it's a extreme it gives them extra opportunities and you know how I feel about slightly happy opponents. They shouldn't exist. <laughs> so, yeah, the idea is if I can figure the center out before I make a decision about castle, I get both, uh, both ways. But if they take with the knight, now what? I'll actually, let me show you um, how this game actually turned out. Because this was a real game that I had. And it was just so nice. I'm attacking left and right. I'm and then again at attacking, attacking, attacking. And like I knew I had a bit of an advantage pretty much the whole game, but it was really hard to convert it until I actually got a nice. Well, I stopped their attack and I have extra material. So. All right, I'm gonna do a big jump back. And I know it was a, we kind of went fast, but I'm not trying to. Um, my main focus is the, the opening and the pawn structure and the middle games that could follow. This is not a typical middle game that would follow, and because it was a little weird, it, the game isn't a study if you would like to pay more time on it. But all right, let's stay with knight takes c5. Now what? Can we still long castle or should we start planning on short castle? I'm sorry? Well. Are you sure? No. <laughs> That's not, you're right. I'm just trying to trick you. <laughs> I should be like, look, whenever you're thinking, there should be like two dorsas here. Like an angel dorsa saying, hey, that's, is that a, are you sure that's a good idea? A devil dorsa saying, no, 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 that's not a good idea. So. It reminds me of Halloween with you. Exactly, so exactly. I did have a the weird devil mixed with the red riding hood costume <laughs> i had a red riding costume you said you were be an angel. yeah i couldn't find my wings i, I eventually found my <laughs> wings though it was an emergency devil horn find thing at the end anyways it was quite fun so yes there should be one of that one of that 
So I'm trying to kind of trick you all the time. I'm also trying to guide you all the time. <laughs> all right, so Long Castle is nice. Um, I can't really, I mean, I can't really justify Bishop E2. It's okay, and there's nothing specifically wrong with it. But it also doesn't really do the things we want it to do. Um, yeah, I'm bored with Long Castle. So let's see. Let's say opponent tries to attack me. What are we gonna do? That's fair. How? How would you start? G3? Why? Prepare H4. Oh, if I play H4 and they take it, I'm happy. So happy. H4, <laughs> H4 is possible, but uh, yeah, you're right. H4 is definitely possible, but if you do H4, they can also go B5. So I kind of wanted to. Uh, this was actually a little bit of an off game of mine. I went to Queen F2. And then I kind of continued it with g4, and it, I, I kind of waited around too long, and my opponent got a little too comfortable, and I lost the game. I mean, he was like 2600, I think. Wait, actually, no, this is the game that I drew. How did I draw this? <laughs> oh, this is a different game. Sorry, different experience. Here, I played Queen e1 in a different game. Yeah. And I lost this real bad. This one I remember. And I, I was—I don't even know what I was trying to do. This is like this is not even a cheap trick. It's just a weird trick. And my knight is just so weird here, and like my king is so left alone on his own. And yeah, I lost this real bad. Uh, but the good idea here, queen e1, like queen f2, queen e1s are not bad. But h4 makes more sense to get the pieces rolling first to get those pawns going. Uh, or, or if you really want to like play chill, King B1 also makes sense. Then B5, then you can push G4 or H4. So the moves that you do should be either you know King safety or push push, because if you do what I did with like Queen ideas, it gets a little slow. What about pawn F5? How do we feel about that? Could that work? If they don't take, I'm going to try to f6 it. So let's say they take, I will take over here, and then what are they going to do? Let's say maybe bishop e6. Now, what do you think is a good idea for whites now? Just pawning bishop g4 or c4? Um, it's possible. Would you, would you want to take it though? Or, or do you feel feisty enough to give this check? Because if they take, you can take back. If they take, you can't take back. If they take, this falls. If they don't take, well, this is falling. So this could be a nice, nice way to play it. F5, I think, is like the, the, the chillest way to play it. <laughs> If you don't want to get yourself into those attacks uh, between, like they attack you, you attack them. If you don't want to get yourself in those, then F5 would be the, ch the, the, the chillest way. <laughs> but you have to remember what's going on. All right, I'm going to do a mini uh, jump back. Actually, let's talk about Queen A5. Anything here, what would you do here?
getting a few king b ones in the chat. A3. Okay, let's see. Uh, my king is cast on the queen side. They want to do a queen side pawn storm. If I play A3, then it kind of gives them a new target to come attack. The king B1. Yes. <laughs> uh, A3 is not, you know, it's not losing, but it does give opponent a lot of hopes and dreams to come attack it. And whenever I'm around, we don't want happy opponents. Any, if, I, if anything I do would make my opponent happy, if I even can't find a chess reason for not doing it, that's good enough reason for me to not do it. So, no. No A3. <laughs> so yeah, King B1 makes sense. Your queen is here, you might have some hopes and dreams for A2. I'm just going to King B1 and wish block you. There we go. Alright, let's go back. Uh, what about <laughs> b6? How do you feel about b6? <coughs> yeah. I'm trying not to look, but... Oh, sorry. That's yeah. usually... Sure. Yeah, that's the one thing with leeches. I don't know how to keep my brain happy with my screen and keep you happy without the extra stuff. Thanks. a little too early to be honest the, the thing is even if you are looking at the engine there are so many potential lines that you're just gonna get confused so now it's just more about your understanding your experience and what what doesn't make opponents happy f5 is not a bad idea but it does give opponents slight chances if they take that's cool because we can take it what if they don't take? What if they go like 94? I guess the point I'm trying to make is that f5, not a bad idea. h4, not a bad idea. Queen f2 or e1, not a bad idea. But at this moment, it's more about your choice. As long as you don't give opponents more help on attacking your king, and you're doing something to attack their king, it's fine. You can start with h4, g4, try to bring your queen over. Um, you would like to be able to do f5, f6. Opponents might be able to do f6. So there's a lot of stuff that are happening. So kind of up to you. Because b6 isn't really a threatening move. I'm not really challenged by this move. All right. So you want to trade bishops? Yeah. B6? That's what I um, even if they do, I'm not obligated to take it. I can just wait until you take me and I'll take you and I'm still attacking here. Yeah. Let's say we go h4, they go bishop a6. Even if I don't want to, even if there's no tactics, even if I, there's just like yeah. purely no tactics, even if I just continue pushing and you take me, I will simply just take it back with either one of the rooks. There are tactics there, but even if they're not, uh, this is, doesn't... This doesn't really concern me because you're spending two moves exchanging a bishop that I have not developed. Of course, here this bishop takes c5, and if then take, then I can take, and I mean, happy stuff. All right, um, now a final line that we should cover is what if take? What would you take that back with? So, I'm sorry, what, what would be the idea with b6? I, I'm not 
No, just, just like a normal move uh, to see how to develop, how to get, because both white, like white's position in that situation is comfortable, but black's position is also not really threatened. So now it just be becomes how to continue this position type of. Yep, we gotta take it with the knight, I agree. Let's say bishop c5, now what? So you see, it's a very similar middle game, similar structures, similar um, center stuff, similar ideas. Now, since the, the tension here is gone between those pawns, we could consider long castle. We don't have to, but we do have the option. So. Now, let's say they castle. Now what? Honestly, yeah, I don't see why not. You could start with like h4 or like queen f2 or stuff, but I'm totally happy with this too. And now if they continue their ideas, not g4, if they take, take, that's still totally fine. I actually had a very stressful game. <laughs> I was playing this closed uh, tournament and it was like, oh, actually it was, I think, semi-closed. There were multiple of them I played. And I was playing a grandmaster who was like 24, 98, and it was the first round, and I was like, ah, if I lose, then there goes the potential norm and stuff. Deal with so much harder. So I was just trying to not lose, and I was just trying to keep my, like, hold my end, and just try to play okay. I wasn't trying to do something too crazy, but I also didn't want to give too much advantage or lose too much advantage. So we got into this position, and I got an advantage, and I kind of blew it here. But let me ask you, here, what would be a good idea for white? I missed it in during the game, though, so... Let's say you get the perfect attack, you're attacking. What do you, what do you think you should do? Well, that's what I did. I took it, and the game was fine, and it ended in a draw. I couldn't really make make it work. It's still comfortable, but I can't do much. Opponents can't do much. I oh, thank you. I'm seeing somebody in the chat. All right. What is the one move that could give White like plus six almost? Your queen is in a good spot. Your h2 rook is fine. Your bishop is as good as it can get right now. Your knight or your other rook are the ones that could be improved. Any final thoughts? How about knight to f4? The idea is simple. If you take me, well, wonderful. This should be fun. Huh, you can't really stop this, what's happening. If you don't take it, you, can't, you just can't stop this. Let's say you take rook takes g4. I can even just go rook g1. 
I mean, I feel like Rook G3 is a little bit more effective, but that's kind of the idea. You need to be able to com um, come up with a ways to attack more because you only have two super active pieces on this king, whereas you can easily bring this knight as well. All right, I'm going to do a big jump back. And the final thing I wanted to talk about is, yeah, just you can castle and you can just go for these ideas. You don't have to if you don't want to, but you do have the option of long castle. Um, I've also had a few games in which my, like, my opponent takes, take, 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 and then they try to exchange everything, which we also saw a little bit about. For example, you can just go like knight b5, and if they take, you take. You want this knight to stay in front of this pawn. You want to do a pawn c3 sometime soon. Uh, still a little undecided about this bishop. I could just leave it on d3. I'm not that excited into exchanging it, so we'll kind of see how things go. But that would be a nice way. Uh, let's see. If, for example, here opponent goes like pawn a6, I, I had a long castle game. Like here, I could start pushing the h pawn too. And you can simply just kind of wait to see what happens. I kind of missed the knight e4 idea, to be completely honest, because I was just not looking for it. And um, my opponents, I mean, you can't really take because, well, thanks. You can't take here because, well, thanks, check. And it was just such a cool but weird move. <laughs> and I didn't see it in time in the game, and I went back 92. I ended up winning the game anyways. But still, this would have been much more pleasant because now I have bishop, the other bishop can get here, so this would be too good to be true. So, uh, I hope you are kind of more comfortable with some of the potential centers, pawn structures, middle games that you would get in this specific uh, line of French. And oh my god, I'm a little afraid to say, but I think we're done with French. <laughs> It doesn't feel real. I don't believe it fully. But for now, we'll say we're done. And if I come up with something else, we can revisit the topic. So we still have a little bit of more Karokan to cover from next week on. But we'll see. We'll see how things are turning out. Uh, oh, actually, I don't think I'm seeing you on YouTube until, my, until next week. Because I believe tomorrow's streams are not happening because of GCT and uh, the, the tournament and life and I'm gra I have my graduations this weekend so keep uh, keep up with my Instagram <laughs> and uh, I got my Mizumit celebration at some point keep up with that as well <laughs> and uh, finally oh yes please don't forget to be here 6 a.m. <laughs> watch the GCT commentary with um, Alejandro Ramirez, Yasser Siravan, my potential future coach, Chirilla, <laughs> and all those fun stuff. 6.50 a.m. Central Time. Oi. Good luck, everybody. I'll be sound asleep. <laughs> I will see you later. Oh, I forgot to say.